All right, everyone, I am going to be publishing this at 11.15 Eastern instead of 10.30 because I have a meeting today, but I did want to go through this. I actually tried doing this both with audio and a previous video, but neither of them turned out very well. So here goes nothing. Hopefully it will be even shorter. So there's a real conflict right now going on inside not only the Democratic Party, but within the left wing over who would be the per best person to represent their worldview. Would it be somebody who focuses more on the economics, somebody more on the foreign policy, you know, non-interventionism, or somebody who might check some boxes in the identity categories or who has a compelling story? Personally, I think that the third option is rapidly losing its appeal. Uh, people aren't really hinging. They're not. They're not really latching on to Elizabeth Warren or Kamala Harris or any of these other identity politics dependent candidates. Because to be honest with you, I think people are a bit jaded, and they also have real priorities that they want to push for. So you have this article from Jacoban, which essentially made the case that. Uh, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden are the only two options. And this is something that I was thinking earlier is pretty much analogous to the 2016 campaign. Only at that time, people were saying, well, the only option for the general election is either Hillary or Trump. OK, now this is being moved over to the primary where people are saying, well, it's only Bernie or Joe, Joe Biden. And I think it might rub a few people the wrong way. Although, to be fair, there's a few reasons, uh, you know, I, I beat up on Bernie Sanders a lot. I despise the man. I think he has little integrity at all. He, he's basically sold out to the D Democratic National Committee. And I think that there, <coughs> there are a few other candidates who could be, you know, better. Or, or they at least bring something different to the table, maybe not something I would want. I certainly don't think I'm going to be a Democrat uh, in this election cycle or vote for one, but who knows? Uh, but but yeah, Tulsi Gabbard, for example, I saw that Ron Paul endorsed her, uh, or rather, I think I don't think he he endorsed her for the general election, but he did make make it appear as if he he views her as the best Democrat in the primary, and he in fact said that. She is very liberal when it comes to economics. We probably wouldn't agree with too much on economics. But he also said Tulsi Gabbard by far is the very, very best. And this is from the Washington Examiner, which, by the way, made they made it clear that Ron Paul was appearing on RT. Now, there's a very simple reason why some of these people appear on RT. They get blackballed from other networks. Uh, Ron Paul isn't running. He's not. He doesn't have an office anymore in uh you know in congress he's, he's basically just running his ron paul liberty institute and a lot of the stuff he puts out nowadays is kind of uh, ridiculous in my opinion but in terms of the symbolism of who ron paul is uh, for many of us he was our introduction to uh you know escaping this idea of the of the massive welfare state and for for many of us who are libertarians he is the compass for where we look to for the, the majority of our ideas. Doesn't mean we agree with him on everything, but at least I respect him and uh, look for him, look for like a lot of guidance on, on some of these issues because for many years he was out in the political wilderness doing it. <clears throat> now, I will tell you a bit about uh, some of these other issues <laughs> that are coming up. Um, <clears throat> You do have this issue of Senator Kirsten Sinema was apparently the only Democratic major politician to uh, stand unequivocally on Israel's side in the, the weekend, uh, you know, flare up of violence attacks by uh, ro rocket launchers against Israel from, from the Hamas, uh, Hamas group. And this is a very important landmark, okay? <clears throat> now, you know where I stand, okay? I, I, I'm not going to stand against my own family, <clears throat> okay? I do support Israel. Uh, notable thing is Mike Gravel, 
Uh, he <laughs> explicitly said that, uh, long live Palestine. Now, um, I disagree with him heavily, but he's being honest. And that's a lot, that's a lot to ask for, apparently, nowadays from most candidates. So Mike Gravel said unequivocally that he stands against the, the Israelis. And to be honest with you, I think uh, honesty being the best policy is uh, something that's that's really uh, lacking today. But yeah, Kirsten Cinema, who was uh, she's a freshman senator from Arizona, and uh, most people would probably have never expected her to uh, say this because she ran and she was uh, kind of moving towards the center, but she had kind of a pretty far left profile back in the day. I believe at one point she was a member of Code Pink, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, I'd have to check on that. So don't hold me to it. Uh, another another crazy issue that came up in the past day was this ridiculous report by Jim Acosta. And Tiger Woods, they have a pretty long history. Uh, they certainly do, Wolf, uh, and this is going to be uh, quite an event. We see the president come out here in just a few moments with uh, the golf champion, Tiger Woods. Uh, he just won the Masters uh, last month, and typically with these uh, presidential medal uh, freedoms, Wolf, as you know, they're typically uh, handed out uh, and issued to uh, notable figures after a, a career of achievements at the end of uh, their careers, uh, typically for these recipients. Uh, Tiger Woods, it seems the president was so excited about uh, uh, Mr. Woods uh, winning the Masters tournament last uh, last month that he decided on, in a tweet uh, to issue this Presidential Medal of Freedom. And so we're going to see that taking place in just a few moments. Uh, one thing that we should note, uh, the New York Times did a story about this uh, just in the last 24 hours, asked the White House uh, to essentially defend why the president was having Tiger Woods out here. And Sarah Sanders, in a statement to the New York Times, said uh, that uh, the president is issuing this presidential medal, medal of freedom, not only because of uh, his, uh, you know, winning the Masters tournament and all of his achievements uh, in the world of golf, but also for breaking barriers in the sport. So that's the, the word from the White House about that. We should note, Wolf, that uh, President Trump and Tiger Woods do have a history that predates his administration. They've been friends for uh, many years. And as a matter of fact, back in 2013, the president tweeted about how he had stood by Tiger Woods uh, when he was going through some personal trauma in his life, and the president was taking credit in that tweet, essentially for standing by uh, Tiger Woods and all of that. And so uh, while the president is sometimes criticized uh, for not always showing loyalty to people who work for him, people that work in his administration, people who work inside this White House, uh, it should be said that he has shown some loyalty uh, to Tiger Woods over the years. Now, we should also note, Wolf, uh, that the president and Tiger Woods do have uh, something of a business arrangement. Uh, the president's uh, company, the Trump Organization, hired Tiger Woods to design a golf course uh, at the president's uh, at the president's company's uh, golf course in Dubai. Uh, Wolf, uh, that obviously shows that there are some some business ties between these two men. And I suppose uh, a critic could argue, uh, after watching all of this, that there might be uh, somewhat of an advertisement going on here, a TV ad going on here, and handing out this presidential uh, medal of freedom to Tiger Woods. It is in, in effect publicizing one of the Trump golf courses uh, there in Dubai that uh, Tiger Woods had a, had a hand in, uh, although we should point out the, that uh, that particular course has not opened yet. Uh, and so, uh, you so, so that, that I think is, you know, Jim Acosta, <clears throat> it started out like more normal than some of his other like swill. But the fact is that he, he started to careen off of the rails and say, well, Look, he, he has this golf course all the way in the, Dubai, and they might be using it to promote it. Well, maybe they will. Who cares? And by the way, it's not as if you need to promote a Trump property. It's not as if uh, you, you need nowadays to promote Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, I made a video about this over the weekend. Tiger Woods' uh, career tra trajectory as opposed to LeBron James. Tiger Woods stuck to the game of golf even though he had some monumental issues with uh, the whores, of course. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's redeemed himself in the eyes of many people, especially in the golf community. You would think people in the community of golf would have kind – of, they, they would look down their nose at someone who got caught uh, banging a lot of uh, very dirty ladies. But <laughs> the fact is that Tiger never really uh, – yeah, I would say there was a period where – 
Uh, it was it was kind of uh, risque to mention his name, but he recovered and I think he won a PGA Championship very recently, not uh, along with the Masters. And from what I understand, the reason that he got the Presidential Medal of Freedom now was that in addition to his career comeback, which at some point people were saying that his career is over and that he's done and stick a fork in Tiger Woods, Tiger also came back from a crazy, I think it was, somebody said like 19 stroke uh, deficit, but I mean, I could be wrong and I'm not a golf guy anyway. Which would be crazy, though. So the, that was in the Masters, which is the the biggest event on the golf calendar all year long. Bigger than the U.S. Open, bigger than the British Open, uh, bigger than, than the PGA Championship, everything else. So I think that it's a tremendous act of disrespect on the part of, not to, to Donald Trump, you know, God forbid that I'd said, tell CNN to, to stop its obsession with Donald Trump, but to Tiger Woods, who, you know, he's, he's obviously, there, there were like reports at the time that he, he was having mental issues, uh, I remember, and he, he's back, and, and it was a, a very, you know, I don't, I don't normally get into symbolism or things like that. But I watched the ceremony and it was very, I would say, impressive watching Tiger Woods there talking to Donald Trump. You know, T Tiger Woods, I would say, is one of the most, uh, you know, dignified people. In I mean, aside from the whole whore thing, <laughs> but, but when, when you hear him talk, he's a very dignified guy. And I think he's, um, you know, he's really an asset to the world of sports and, and, and the world of golf. You know, a lot of people can't really get into golf. And Tiger Woods has changed the audience of the game so much because look at him. I mean, he's he's a different type of face. He's a different type of person. He's a different type of profile for, for golfers. So, yeah, I think it's uh, really a disgrace what is going on with our media today where they have to take – a simple ceremony honoring some, you know, world-class athlete and twist it into some sort of uh, political issue. But that's what we're talking about. And that's why I want to get back to the original topic of this, of this race. You had, and I'll show you this graphic because it kind of helps illustrate it. But you have all of these candidates uh, who are running in 2020, and they just don't have much in common if you talk about very important issues. Uh, you can't see it so well over here, but you have Joe Biden, uh, you know, going up against a lot of these much younger figures like, for example, um, this, this Wayne Messam. Nobody knows who he is. You have Seth Moulton, who I think I think he even served in Iraq. So this senator who's been in or, or he, he was vice president, of course. So Vice President Biden, uh, he has this generational gap with some of these people that I, I don't really know if we're talking. This this could be one of the most confusing presidential elections of all time. Then you have Eric Swalwell going up against Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, I mean, a, a, a big Russiagate myth purveyor like Eric Swalwell versus Tulsi Gabbard, who is one of, she, she's never buy, bought into the Russia gate nonsense. Uh, you have some people who are uh, out and out business uh, Democrats like Hickenlooper versus Bernie Sanders. You have uh, Julian Castro, who's a cabinet official versus a, a small town mayor like Pete Buttigieg. And, and that, then you get into their pro, their, uh, their platforms and, and some of them are just kind of a mess or, or, or they're very, you know, focused on something that's that's kind of irrelevant or that only appeals to a certain person. For example, Marianne Williamson, she's obsessed with this whole um, this, this reparations issue. And then Andrew Yang is the UBI guy. And, and I respect Andrew Yang. I think I think Andrew Yang's definitely brought a lot of beef to the table. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's really kind of. Uh, a mess right now with all of these people. And yet the media thinks that Trump is the person who's really in trouble. No, I, I think the Democratic Party's in trouble. 
I think that they're going to have a, a trouble focusing on really what they're about. I think that you're going to see this civil war just evolve into more and more internists and fighting as it keeps going. So I think I'm going to cut it short today. That's about it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe to me, of course, on uh, BitChute at Chef Leopard, also on Minds at Chef Leopard, and on Gab at Starscream85. I'm also going to try to put out my first piece of merchandise. So... I am looking for designs for the Barbarian, okay, Bar the Barbarian. If you want to send me something uh, to put on the t-shirt, it would be chefleopardyt at gmail.com. Again, that's chefleopardyt at gmail.com. And uh, I think that's about it. I'll try to put out my own design in the coming days, see if you guys like it. Uh, I just put up something rough that I didn't really like, but that's it. See you guys later.